So you want a medieval or fantasy medieval hairstyle. Going to a LARP or a reenactment, maybe doing some character design, or you're a living anachronism like me, searching for the true medieval experience. Today we're talking about men's medieval hairstyles. What's historically accurate, what's practical, what you should look to copy, and what you should look to avoid. Now, medieval hairstyles for men is a topic with really sparse references. There are plenty of videos for women who want to learn different braids or wear their hair in bonnets or look like Cersei Lannister or whatever, but if you're a guy, there's precious little out there for you to copy. Most of what you search for on the internet isn't even historically accurate in the first place. It's very difficult to tell fact from fiction. So if you're searching for a style and all you look at is Google images or popular movies or TV, you're gonna see a lot of styles that most men don't have the hair length to emulate. You may not even want to have long hair, but men had short hair in the medieval period too. Before we get to my style suggestions, let's talk a little bit about history and some historical archeology span to help better explain why I've chosen what I've chosen. And if you want to skip ahead to the examples, there will be a timestamp either here in the video or in the description. If you're sticking around, great. It means you're like me and you value not just what things were, but why they were what they were. So let's start with why I think super long hairstyles, very long hairstyles for men, um, are just Hollywoodisms and practically would never have been done. And for the purposes of this video, I am defining very long hair as anything shoulder length or longer. So long hair looks really sellable and dramatic on screen, but in real life, it actually turns out to be very impractical. Throughout history and across cultures, we see that a person's hair length correlates directly to their social status. And if you take into account practicality, that actually makes a lot of sense with the idea being that you must not work by virtue of maintaining your appearance, or that because you do not work and you are so poor, you cannot maintain your appearance, I guess. But we really see that nobility are the people with longer hair. While we see that shaving your head or having very short cropped hair is seen as an act of humility and is sometimes even a punishment. Let's consider this quote here from lordsandladies.org. Whilst persons of rank were distinguished by their long and flowing hair, the people wore theirs more or less short according to the degree of freedom which they possessed, and the serfs had their heads completely shaved. It was customary for the noble and free classes to swear by their hair, and it was considered the height of politeness to pull out a hair and present it to a person. The degradation of kings and princes was carried out in public manner by shaving their heads and sending them to the monastery. On their regaining their rights and their authority, their hair was always allowed to grow again. Or this quote from MedievalChronicles.com. Common medieval men's hairstyle was to have short hair which was combed forward toward the front of the forehead without parting. For men, particularly among nobility, the most common practice was to let the hair grow long and sometimes part it from the middle. However, Medieval men's hairstyles did not have as much variety as was found in medieval women's hairstyles. Now, while it is true that in the context of a medieval battlefield, long hair probably wouldn't be that much of a disadvantage. If you want more on that perspective, you can check out the Metatron's video, which will be linked up here. There are many other scenarios in which having shoulder length hair or longer becomes a definite disadvantage from the male context. Off the top of my head, dueling or grappling, everyday travel or work, even just lying down, long hair can definitely become a hindrance. But there's a major, major thing that pertains to men and the length of their hair that isn't discussed that I haven't seen. And that is armor, specifically chainmail, but any armor that your hair can get caught in while you're putting it on, taking it off, or just while you're fighting is a major health concern, and at least an inconvenience while you're donning it. As someone with long hair, I can attest that while I can do practical physical activities, even in period like sword fighting or shooting a bow, I am not optimizing my efficiency. And it is painfully obvious when I try to do stuff, sometimes literally painful. We can also look at sources that I haven't found to help explain what might have happened in the past. Now, absence of evidence is not evidence of absence, but 
consider this. When I'm donning my hood, I have two options. I can either tuck my hair in to the hood, or I can pull it out. Yet when we look at historical iconography, we don't see this protrusion of hair coming from underneath men's hoods. Add to that the fact that hoods and chainmail coifs, which were very important to the time period, were very close fitting to the face, and you have two options there as well. Either they tucked their hair in, almost defeating the purpose of having long hair in the first place, and very uncomfortable, mind you, or they just didn't have long hair. Now, it's possible that artists from the time period just omitted this protrusion of hair, but given the accuracy with which they are able to reproduce other medievalisms in their art, I find that less likely than more likely. So, we know that having long hair doesn't really work with the clothing or armor of the period. And we know that we don't really see the hair protrusion you would expect with long hair from clothing for men in the period. And then you look at photographs, not photographs, but paintings, uh, drawings, what have you, of men from the time period without their hoods, and we also don't see that they have super long hair. So all of that indicates to me that super long hair for men is a Hollywood made up thing. So even in the context of a fantasy adventurer, shoulder length hair or shorter seems to be the most optimal and practical. The length of a person's hair would be more of a byproduct of their lifestyle rather than a deliberate style choice as it would be if you were a noble. And that's the sort of practicality that I think we can afford to ignore in a modern context. You cut your hair so that you can look good. We do exactly what the nobles of that time period did. They wanted it styled a certain way. They wanted to look a certain way. Most people probably didn't do that. And, and it might seem even obvious to just state a fact that mundane, but when you're talking about character design in movies, which is what we see most often, all of them seem to have these very procured, tailored looks, because they're, they're, they're products. The character is a product that you're selling to the audience, and that makes sense from an acting standpoint. And I think it would be really cool to start seeing more of these practical considerations be incorporated into character designs. Now, practicality means not only having a style that is practical once it's done, but a style that doesn't take too long to cut, doesn't require being cut too often, and doesn't take an inordinate amount of time to braid or wash, as that would be time-consuming at least, and expensive and impossible at most. So given limited styling products, cutting options, and the need for practicality, certain modern styles start to rise above the others when used for LARPs, TV, character design, reenactment, or movies. Unless you want to go for this look, more power to you. Now for all of these examples, I'm going to recommend that you use styling products that have as few synthetic ingredients as possible and as many natural period ingredients as possible to sort of help increase immersion. The idea being that if you're using products that are similar to the time period, you'll end up with a look similar to the time period. Now also bear in mind that not all of these styles reference the same time period, and not all of them are even correlated to a time period because they're fantasy. So there will be more uh, sources that I've used or found in the description for people that are going for something specific and you want to do a little bit more research. Consider these rules more like guidelines. If you have shorter hair, the rule of thumb should be if you can comb your hair forward and still see, do that. And if you can't see, either cut your hair or slick it back, but don't part it. So people with undercuts normally, sort of the more modern styles, should be going for this Bjorn Ironsides look from Vikings. Modern bowl cuts are sort of regaining popularity at the moment, as far as I can tell. So if your hair is bordering on that length and you don't have the super shaped sides, go for uh, King Henry from The King, or you could try to copy Henry from the video game Kingdom Come Deliverance, or Yaskier from The Witcher TV Show. If you've got slightly longer hair, 
or you are growing out your hair and it's not quite there yet. Try copying Rob Stark or Jon Snow pre-man bun from Game of Thrones. If you compare their curly medium length styles to pictures from the time period, they actually match pretty accurately. Robert the Bruce's mullet style from The Outlaw King might be something you could pull off, or again, the more slicked back uh, style that Braun has, again, from Game of Thrones. For gentlemen with long hair, again, I will recommend not going longer than shoulder length. Obviously, hair elastics don't exist. Braids, pomades, or I guess bare fat, or hats are the only way to keep our hair out of our face. I will personally recommend braiding over trying to use like string or leather cord to tie your hair back. Um, as a dancer, I can tell you that if you are using anything to tie your hair back with less than maximal strength, and then you try to do something athletic, it will come loose and then fall off almost immediately. Not your hair, the hair tie. If your hair's falling off because you're doing athletic movements, maybe get that looked at. <laughs> now, I mentioned this long, short bangs style previously. There is a caveat to this. Aragorn, Boromir, and Faramir all managed to pull it off somehow, and I have no earthly idea how they look this good. I don't know, I don't understand. Maybe I'll have to try it one day, just to see if it's actually possible. But another alternative, a more modern look that looks less silly on the rest of us mortals, is the half up, half down style seen on Ned Stark from Game of Thrones, or from Lord of the Rings, Eomir and Aragorn from the final scenes of Return of the King, where you have the very top fringe that you would normally cut to be your bangs historically pulled back and braided on the back of your head um, and then you leave all of the rest of the hair down. Now, I could be mistaken, but I don't believe that the full half up, half down style that you see um, on Geralt from The Witcher TV show or in The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt are historically accurate because I couldn't find any sources, either visual or literary, that indicated to me that sideburns were fashionable to the time period. I think especially for Lord of the Rings reenactment, copying Viking or early medieval styles is probably what Tolkien had in mind when he was writing the books, because we know he wanted to recreate a modern version of a Norse saga, an epic, which he did. There are many depictions of men from this period in history with shoulder length hair, or shorter, but I can't find any, again, of depictions of men with longer than shoulder length hair. And there are things that I have already mentioned earlier in this video that might explain why we don't see longer hair on Viking men. What is something that all Norse men were expected to train and practice to the point where it became an actual sport? Glima, wrestling, grappling. And what was the most common type of armor in this time period? Chaino. Shorter hair makes more sense, I rest my case. That being said... So anyway, that's the end of today's video, guys. I really hope everyone enjoyed and found some inspiration in the examples here today. And if you liked the video, please like the video and uh, share it with people that you know or your lads if you're going to an event together. I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, good luck on your adventures.